you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 175 of Category 5 Technology TV. Great to see you. Nice to have you here. Welcome, one and all. It's Tuesday, January the 25th, 2011. I almost I said know, 2010. Bad habit. I know. 2011. It takes a whole year to break it. <laughs> 2012 will come and I'll start saying 2011, finally. Good to see you. How are you? Thank you. Surprise. Surprise. I'm here. Yeah, in <laughs> full glorious HD. Ooh, I know. I Fantastic. Know it looks fabulous. Yeah. Looks really good. Great. Perfect. Uh, we've got a lot going on tonight, don't we? Very busy show. Very, Very busy, busy show. We have two pogo plugs to give away tonight. Ooh, you know how I love free stuff, people. And someone times two, two people are going to win. Two peeps. Mm -hmm. it's Good be luck. Awesome. Stick around. We're going to be giving those away a little bit later on tonight. Uh, also, we have uh, Philippa Hasselstrom and Christine Porter joining us from Telestream mm -hmm. down in sunny California. And they are staying warm. And they're going to talk to us about internet broadcasting and how that's kind of revolutionizing the way that we hmm. tune into our media and how broadcasters are actually broadcasting that same media. So stick around. Make sure you get into the chat room uh, if you're at all interested in uh, internet broadcasting or even just finding out how you can do it. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a fantastic media. Get in on the ground floor. Get in now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got uh, some of the best people here with us tonight to, uh, to talk about how you can get... Uh, involved in internet broadcasting so get in the chat room category 5.tv it's going to be a, a great time oh, yeah. and uh, what have you got coming up in the news as well you lots got lots of stuff coming up on in the world of the news it's going to be a busy show coming up stay tuned for the 10th billion download that has been made from apple's app store and the company's just announced this no mm. is it's because i got my ipod touch i know right so i was sitting there and i, I actually downloaded you. 10 billion <laughs> You were responsible Apps. for the yeah. 10 billionth app download. This guy right here. Not really. <laughs> Somebody in the UK, stick around, you'll find out more. <laughs> um, no is looking for a student ambassador, uh, so, oh sorry, student ambassadors, more than one, to promote their Ubuntu-based dual screen tablet. Microsoft cool. has confirmed that some handset running its Windows Phone 7 software are sending and receiving phantom data. And cyber thieves are cashing in after stealing credit cards in a hack attack on the website of cosmetics firm Lush. Stick around for the latest news from the Category 5.tv newsroom. Fantastic, thanks. No problem. Well, there you go. Thanks, Agamotto. Did you hear me, world? I hope you did. Just know, just know this, that you better be here to hear me when I read all these fabulous stories later on in the newsroom. If you could just give me a quick sound check, Hill. This is Hillary Rumble. I'm on Category 5 in the flesh. And now my audio is better. Fantastic. Welcome to live broadcasting. We're talking about internet broadcasting, and this is what it's all about, my friends. It's all about uh, last-minute yeah. preparations, yep. plugging in cameras to the computer <laughs> at the last second. And we have uh, gloriously upgraded our camera. John mm -hmm. is... Uh, is working back there and he's he's seriously he's sitting there with the oh. with the tilt and zoom and he's just going oh. this is amazing <laughs> so i hope you enjoy that tonight it's going to uh, really change the the way that the show looks and uh, i am very pleased to have uh philippa and christine joining us from telestream ladies it's uh, it's very nice to see you thanks for joining us tonight yeah, thanks for having us thank you uh if, what i'll what i'll do is just kind of introduce uh, what it is that uh, that Telestream or Wirecast means to our show. And if we can get into, uh, now this is a great opportunity for people who are interested in internet broadcasting to get in here, talk to uh, some people from Telestream about uh, internet broadcasting. We're going to call this the uh, kind of live broadcasting 101. <laughs> Not that we're keeping track, but uh, uh, certainly we've got a lot to cover tonight. But uh, Wirecast is the is the amazing software that we use here at Category 5 uh, in order to broadcast the show live. It also provides those high quality RSS feed downloads, uh, all of those files that you, uh, that you download week to week, those files are recorded directly from Wirecast. So it's kind of like the one-stop solution for camera switching. Uh, anytime we are doing 
the graphics at the bottom here if uh, we're changing names and things like that. I wish and you could all see, yeah, the, the CG, the name keys and switching the angles, oh. like it's phenomenal. Um, as much as we can within the, the confines of a one hour show. <laughs> but Wirecast has really taken our show and, and you remember back when we first introduced Wirecast, uh, probably about a year and a half ago, where it really boosted the show to the next level in mm -hmm. that uh, camera switching was instantaneous, there were no more gaps between camera switching angles yeah. and, and uh, video quality all of a sudden was through the roof. Uh, as much as it could be with the cameras that we used yeah. because what's interesting about this kind of technology is that it's it transcends from the basic you know you could use a webcam you could use a step up which is uh, you know let's say a, an SD camera something that uses yeah. firewire or something like that or you can get into what we're doing tonight which is uh, an HDMI HD 1080 uh, camera very cool so I'd, I'd love to hear uh, from you ladies uh, what it is that each of you do at, uh, at Telestream and how, uh, you know, we'll get into just a conversation tonight uh, with, with myself and with Hillary and with our chat room about uh, what, uh, what internet, uh, what we kind of can expect out of internet media over the next couple of years. Sounds great. Um, I'm Philippa, as we said before, and um, I'm a product manager for Wirecast. And I'm Christine, and I'm the community manager at Telestream, and I also work with partners, which uh, revolves a lot around Wirecast. Very good. So in your position, Philippa, what does that entail, uh, being a product manager? It's a lot about listening to what you guys want and need mm -hmm. and uh, mapping that out in the product roadmap and, of course, being very kind of, you know, sensitive to the market and, and um, yeah, making the product even better. Very cool. And, and I have seen over uh, the course of our, our usage of uh, Wirecast uh, how much you, you work to improve the product and, and listen to your community. There's a, a vast array of, of support coming from your community forums as well, uh, which, which, you know, that in itself says a lot for the company as well. Um, yeah, we listen a lot when we, did, when we released Wirecast 4 now, and we're really happy to see that a lot of our users are you know, they appreciate the features that we put in there, and mm -hmm. it feels great. Right. And we're paying attention to all the different channels out there. We've got um, we've got people on Twitter. We've got the forums. Craig's running the forum, as you said, and so mm. we get we we hear all the feedback. And a lot of these things, as you may have noticed, have gotten incorporated with the product, and lots more to come. And we're happy to hear that you guys like it and that it works well for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like any any piece of software, you, you do encounter the occasional blip or uh, when we introduce, like this is our first night with HD cameras, and mm -hmm. so you know there's the nervousness of, of the big upgrade to, to new hardware and things, and there's always that. Uh, but the support of your community and the support of, like you say, Craig in the in the forum there, and uh, as as a pr like an actual representative of Telestream as well as the community of users, uh, the support level is really there. And, uh, and that's really fantastic. Um, and, and what I'm going to ask to have happen tonight is, Hillary, I'm, if you can watch the chat room really, yeah, really certainly. closely for those who are asking questions and just kind of pass that on. Mm -hmm. uh, and you ladies are in the chat room as well, I understand? Yep, we're watching as, as watch. it goes on, yes. Fantastic. So any questions uh, that you have with regards to internet broadcasting, this is your chance. Uh, and if you're catching this after the fact, uh, send us an email, live at category5.tv. Great opportunity for you to, uh, to get your questions in. If I can answer it for you at that point, then, uh, then that's fine. And if not, uh, I'll, I'll pass you along to, uh, to Telestream and uh, they'll be able to so send you some, some support. Um, so what, what uh, is kind of the, the nature of live streaming as it is now? Like when I started um, streaming video, if you can believe, was back before Real Player G2. And when G2 came out, it was that was the thing, and it was it was this huge big deal when that came out. Now, the internet has been revolutionized with things like Flash, which to us now seem uh, like an older technology, <laughs> but it's still in use, and and we're broadcasting with Flash Media tonight, uh, and then recording to all these different formats. Mm -hmm. So, how has the the internet and and the kind of the evolution of high speed internet? Uh, over the past 10 years, how has that really impacted the way that uh, that internet broadcasting is going to be uh, moving forward? That's a good question. I mean, what we see is this increasing uh, need for it or 
um, the people are screaming for it. And we see this increase that is a 650% according to Comscore uh, for live video content out there. And, you know, wow. sites like Justin TV, Ustream, um, they are just growing. And it's amazing. Right. And it's an amazing space to be in because we get more requests for Wirecast than we can manage, more or less. Really? It's, it's That's fantastic. Yeah. What, what that r makes me wonder is, um, like when you mention things like Justin TV and stuff, like, and I, I can understand they have a massive amount of bandwidth. Um, mm -hmm. One of the questions that, that was asked of me is, what happens when the internet gets to the point where there's just not enough bandwidth to support all these television shows that are broadcasting in HD quality through the internet? When, when do we have to be concerned about that and, wh and what kind of, uh, you know, are there steps that are taken towards that? That's just something that's kind of curious to me. I don't, that's an interesting <laughs> thing to ponder. Um, I, I do you have. I don't think that we will. I don't think that that will happen. Maybe that yeah. is naive. We see a trend, of course, that it's a, a higher. I mean, that it's increasing all the time. Mm -hmm. But also, we see that the capacity in our networks. It's we're moving to 4G. Europe is really strong there. I mean, I think that yeah. the develop when it comes to internet connection and speed is is going to handle the the new demand. I think so. I'm just curious, like, because with a jump 650% in, yeah. in how much people are watching yeah. internet-based TV, <laughs> my viewers especially. Yeah. <laughs> and just that, just that anybody can do it now. It takes so little to get your video up on the web. It just, you, people don't have limitations like they did in the old days. Absolutely. And, um, and you know, it, you know, I have a I have a young son, and he's interested in video, and you know, every it's easy for him to to do things and contribute to the the online video. Yeah, and that, yeah. that raises uh, services such as like YouTube or something where you know it's on demand and the bandwidth can be kind of distributed over a wider network. Um, but it, it's just amazing how how things have progressed, and and Telestream is kind of at the forefront. I, I think of of that progression and it's an exciting place to be I think for you. It's been very exciting Definitely and it's is. it's interesting because our our company has had so much growth and um, many people here are just trying to manage various things just to kind of keep up and we have right. lots of um, job openings at the moment I should throw that in <laughs> so you can always look on the web to see what we've got available right now but um now i should say is, while while we're here okay so you've got job openings where are those jobs physically located or are these uh, positions that can be filled through uh through the internet as well um it, it would depend on the particular job i don't know the exact url but if they do go to our website which is telestream.net they would be able to go under company and i think that there's a link there for yeah. the jobs okay so we'd love to have people check that out and then, then moving back to when we talk about live content, what I think is interesting and what also probably does makes it so popular is that it seems like people are tend to watch it for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. If you compare to yeah. you know watching a regular video on YouTube, people tend to watch it more more or less seven percent longer than they would watch a five based video. Than and and that's interesting too. Yeah. And I think that what makes live streaming interesting because things can happen. Yeah, we could do Absolutely. fun stuff here. Like Hillary's <laughs> microphone could be left off or at the beginning of the show. Exactly. You exactly. Know, who knows what can happen? It's wild. Yeah. So I think live streaming is a great space to be in, mm -hmm. and especially now when you can do so much with your computer, you know, a camera and an internet connection. You right. could put your video on the web, and it's so simple. And I think that's important. cheap. And cheap. Yeah. Starting with. Cheap solutions like free solutions. Yeah, free mm -hmm. solutions like Adobe Media Live Encoder or Ustream Producer. I mean, that's amazing. And you, your camera, you're you're on the web. Yeah, right. You could do your own show. I noticed. Uh, I just picked up a, a viewer had had given me an iPod Touch recently as well. Mm -hmm. And even the uh -huh. Justin TV app allows me from the iPod Touch or the iPhone to broadcast directly from that device. And it it's like this whole new world of all of a sudden everyone can be an internet broadcaster. Right. And I think people would do it more and more from their cell phones, and I mean we see we see that already. But There's even a lot more, on the yeah. horizon. Yeah, all the new devices mm -hmm. out there being even more mobile, more portable, more flexible. Um, right. Yeah. So speaking of, we were talking a little bit, kind of touching on price and how cheap it is to to do broadcasting now. I think about uh, for, there's two different sides of the coin. There, there's the days when I was doing Real Media G2, where the amount uh, that you would have to pay for just the bandwidth to broadcast was just 
amazing. Like paying thousands of dollars a month just to be able to stream to a, a small number of people. Now there's companies that have, have started up like Ustream and Justin.TV, just as yeah. a couple of examples, who um, are providing those services on an ad-based basis. So there's no, there's, you know, we don't have to pay for that service to be able to broadcast live. And, right. uh, and those, mm -hmm. and it's just you know, in taking that and and then all of a sudden now with applications like Wirecast from Telestream, we're able to use just a standard PC instead of a twenty thousand dollar piece of hardware, yeah. where we're able to broadcast in HD and upgrade to an HD camera <laughs> with a one hundred and fifty dollar video card and a camera that was three hundred dollars on sale <laughs> and it's yeah. like how does this how did we get to this place over such a short amount of time but that is what is so amazing i think that these new software have just revolutionized the whole idea of broadcasting and i mean you guys can do more you could do green screen we yeah. could you could do a virtual tv studio and i could turn that plant that into anything <laughs> exactly and i mean it's amazing you could do i mean eighty percent of with these high-end solution for a fraction of the cost and i right. think that's something that's right yeah it's so cool and just playing with the with the software just yeah makes me all happy <laughs> <laughs> so do you two broadcast yourselves as well like do you have i guess you using wirecast you need to be familiar with the application right we've had, we've definitely tried it and played with it and i mean you have to if you work with a product you have to kind of grasp what it's doing it. yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. but also we we get a lot of input from all of our great customers and partners uh we did a really cool thing uh for a uk launch of the call of duty black ops mm -hmm. which was amazing to watch and you can tell us more about that yeah we uh, actually i was contacted um i or i kind of overheard via twitter a guy that was going to do this big thing and so we started interacting and he ended up using he ran a company called media kinetic and he ended up using wirecast for the black ops launch and they had um, they had over uh, almost two hundred thousand views, and they ran yeah. it for gosh, five hours. Yeah, more uh, than five hours. I more, think. Wow. more than five hours, and there was it went without a hitch, which is always fabulous to hear. And he's been um, a great advocate for us, uh, and that was a great experience. But it's interesting because you know the online streaming is applicable in so many different areas that mm -hmm. there's. It's, you're only limited by your imagination. You can use it to enhance what you're doing in almost any field, and that's what I see when I work with partners, because I'm contacted with by various people who have an idea, and they think, hey, I think I can use video for what I'm trying to pull off, and we work together, and we're able to um, make something happen, and it's really, really exciting. And it's all from, you know, sports game to the yes. Black Up launch to science. I mean, to we churches. have a, yeah, live churches. streaming in churches. Yeah, yeah. definitely, and, and that, that's the point that I, I was thinking is that um, churches who want to broadcast their services on a weekly yeah. basis, all of a sudden that becomes practical. It used to be that they had to be on some big television network. And yeah. you think about that, and it's, it's revolutionized that. It's the fact that you can broadcast from anywhere. Right. And, and also what's fun is that some of them are more simple. You know, you set up your camera, you maybe use green screen, and then we have the black ops where they, you know, they mixed eight sources, they have pre-recorded sources, they did this huge thing. And it's, it's so cool to see how the software easily scales right. from very low end kind of simple uh, live streams to these complex, really big things that you would expect a hardware to do. Yeah. People are always pleasantly surprised to see that they can really extend beyond maybe yeah. what they even thought that they'd be able to do, like um, these high-profile events like we were just talking about with the Black Ops mm -hmm. and others. Mm -hmm. And we also have our CEO doing a weekly meeting. We use Wirecast internally in the company to broadcast that live to our offices in Sweden. Oh, wow. And, um, so yeah, you're using, it's great. So that's interesting. An interesting point is that you're using the software internally as not, oh, yeah. not necessarily a television program broadcast, but to be able to communicate with other, uh, other net, like network with your other com uh, bases for the company. Yes, and that's something we see. We see a big kind of new area in the business video um, mm -hmm. space right. where people want to use it more for you know company presentations and um, and we do it a lot ourselves. So we totally understand that kind and of people, area. People people in business, as, as Philippa said, are are realizing that they can save a lot of money by using streaming video to to get their message out to their um, company across the nation, across the world, however it works, and it's saving them a lot of money for travel expenses and right. so forth. And tapping and into these free bandwidth solutions as well, all of a sure. sudden it's like this 
that takes kind of even Wirecast, your product, into a whole new level is that I've never really even considered. Right. And education is another one that's real yeah. big, and we have lecturers that are using it in, in big universities, and people, the students can be at home or wherever, and they can tune into the lecture, and they can interact and, right. um, you know, chat directly with the professor or interact with a group that are, you know, participating in the lecture, and it's, it's really, it's really interesting. There's just, it's... It's limitless, really. Thinking of yeah. it from, from the business perspective and being able to do presentations, just even looking at our show, which is uh, based with, that's powered by Wirecast, and the ability, you know, for me to bring up my computer screen, for example, and to be able to bring yeah. up applications and bring up tools that we use on our show for mm -hmm. demonstrations, but all of a sudden, taking that into the educational sector or into the business sector, that becomes uh, a completely different uh, platform for them that's that's affordable, um, yes. and I'm sure. I mean, Wirecast is is not an expensive piece of software, and we'll talk about that. Um, it's it's quite astounding the feature set and what we can do with this. There but there are really some. Cool. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say it, it's it's nice because there's these free solutions that allow people to get in with a minimal investment and start getting used to live broadcasting and honing their skills. And then as you as you graduate to the next level. Telstream's happy to offer a variety of products to help you to help you add production value and to I increase the quality of your broadcast. It's easy to grow and it's it's kind of it's very affordable. I mean, starting with Ustream Producer, going up to maybe Ustream Producer Pro and you can add some titles in there, you can add some transitions. Moving up to Wirecast like you guys, well, you have a lot of more sources and you can mix them and you will have green screen if you want to try that. I mean, yeah, it's easy to scale up, I think to to kind right. of start ASIC and then you get all excited and you want to have all these cool features. Yeah. <laughs> Once you realize what's there and what you can actually do and then you know here we are with a camera and a system that's 1080i and mm -hmm. we can we can eventually grow to that point. Yeah, um, it's amazing. And I mean, we do we do even do virtual studio sets like we talked right, about before. Right. We do scoreboards for live, you know, sports events and it's really cool to see how people use it. Mhm. Mm Right. Yeah, and like you said uh, off the top of the show, it's really just about your imagination and, and what you do with it. Um, I believe there are some questions that are coming in in the chat room, and we'll try not to get into too technical of questions because I know that's that's not really the the what we're looking for tonight. But uh, but certainly, if you do have questions, uh, it's category five TV, or you can join us in the category five uh, chat room on Freenode. <laughs> um, one question that did come in was. Um, People are wondering how often does Wirecast have to increase your streaming capacity because it's happening on a weekly or monthly basis to meet like your overall customer needs? Do you know? With the broadcasting uh, itself? I don't quite understand what you mean no. by increase. I guess it's for the broadcast. I wonder, I wonder if, um, uh, Philippa and Christine, if there's, if there's maybe confusion in the chat room with understanding the relationship maybe. between Wirecast and uh, streaming providers such as Justin.tv or Ustream. Uh, okay. So you have to have a good, um, the upload rate has to be good enough for you to send it to Justin or Ustream. Uh, and then it's when the media goes from Justin and Ustream to your viewers, it's actually the bandwidth between the server, uh, streaming server provider and the end user that is important. So it's kind of, you know, that's where there are bottlenecks all around the place right. because it's internet, right? So it's important that you have a good upload um, capacity. That's right. the important. Thing. But again, we're, we're, we've stepped away from that real player mentality of <laughs> having to have so much bandwidth at the source. And, yeah. and now it's become... So understand, if you'd like to do web broadcasting, basically you, you need to have like a, a DSL connection or... Um, you could start out with something like a cable modem, just a high-speed internet connection, not the light service, yes. because then you just don't have the upstream to be able to do it. But no. if you have a true high-speed connection, like we have DSL uh, 5 megabit here, and it's, it's pretty entry-level compared to some of the fiber options that are available out there for an affordable price. But as a starting point, you can start off with DSL. You can test that out, thinking of the church model. You know, you've got internet there, and you plug into it, and what you broadcast simply has to be of a lower bit rate than the uh, the bit rate that, that your uh, internet connection is able to support. So if you're streaming at 400 kilobits a second, that's really good quality video, but 
if your internet connection supports up to 800, you can do that no problem. You're streaming it mm -hmm. to Justin.tv, you're streaming it to Ustream, and then they're streaming it out to the viewers. So you don't need to worry about how many people are watching because the bandwidth yep. is only one way for you. And, and also, the um, Wirecast does have a bunch of presets that the user can configure to meet their needs. So they're, it's very configurable. And I'd like to throw out there, for people that don't know this, that um, Wirecast is available as a free download, and it's limited with watermarking and audio. Uh, uh, it's like a video watermark. Yeah, yeah. And so, but yeah. it's full feature. So anybody can download the software and give it a try, and you'll be able to do everything. It's just going to have a watermark, which admittedly can be annoying, but um, it's, it's, it's like you can use yeah. the software to its full capacity, but then yeah, every yeah. five minutes, it is. <laughs> No, it doesn't. Maybe, maybe a little it doesn't bit really more do that. It's a little minutes. more subtle than yeah, that. Probably a bit more, but it, it works. Yeah, it's a good way to try mm -hmm. it. And then you can also, you could get an account at the streaming server providers and you right. can check your um, upload rate. And I mean, if it's choppy, you could select a lower resolution setting just to adjust. Um, right, right. So you don't have to go with the really high uh, resolution stuff. And we do have a lot of these um, user generated content uh, providers. We have them built in right to Wirecast. So it's just pretty much one click to send your stream to the provider of your choice. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Yeah, we use uh, both Ustream and Justin.tv simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And what they mean there is when you're creating your broadcast, uh, you're able to select Justin.tv. You don't have to figure it all out. You just enter your Justin.tv login. It creates right. an RTMP file, and boom, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So very, very simple setup to, to get you up and going. And it is a good point that there is a, a free trial version as well. Um, yeah. And, and like, like has been said here, you can, you can give that a go, and, and it is full featured just with those audio overlays, which are not quite as annoying as my demonstration. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Indeed. So. Any other questions before we hop into the news? Uh, are, are you good for time that uh, we can welcome some more questions? And Sure. Fantastic. Okay, so if, if you could stick around, uh, we're going to be back uh, after, after the news. All righty. Okay. Well, people, as you may or may not have heard earlier, there's lots going on in the world of technology news. So from the Category 5.TV newsroom, the 10 billionth download has been made from Apple's App Store. The world's largest technology firm reached the milestone on Saturday night. The downloaded game was a free app called Paper Glider, developed by British company Neon Play, where users control a paper airplane. All of the millions of Apple users from around the world, it was downloaded by Gail Davis, um, and she was from Orpington in Kent. Hmm. The No is a clever or single dual screen 14.1 inch tablet aimed at the education market and powered by Ubuntu and Linux. The company needs to get the word out, and so they are turning uh, to their potential customers for help. The No Student Ambassador Program is open to any U.S.-based college student looking to gain a unique marketing and communication resume blurb, but also um, have a deep discount on a No tablet. The job responsibilities aren't light, doesn't seem like something easily scammed. You'd be required to attend weekly meetings, conduct product demos, work with student clubs and organizations, as well as participate in no viral marketing campaigns. Ambassadors are required to buy their own no, but at 50% off. This works out to a nice discount as the no starts at around $5.99, but the 32 gig dual screen uh, flavor runs for $9.99. As in almost a thousand, that's what I mean by that. Anyways, to get more info on this, you can visit cat5.tv slash no to apply, or check out no.com to find out more about the device. How do we spell no? Now, if you are wondering, yes, that is a good question. <laughs> K-N-O dot com. Yes. So not, not the opposite of yes as a no and not no as you know what you're doing. No W. K-N-O dot com. To press on, Microsoft has confirmed that some handsets are running its Windows Phone 7 so Oh, some handsets that are running Windows uh, Phone 7 software are sending and receiving phantom data. The problem surfaced in early January with some owners of phones running Windows Phone 7 claiming that their phone was sending between 30 and 50 megabytes of data every day, an amount that would eat into one gigabyte allowance uh, in 20 days. Microsoft said that uh, through the investigation, they found that most of the problems were caused by an unnamed third-party service. However, uh, it was said that it was still, they're still looking into other potential faults as to why this is happening. A spokesperson for Microsoft said, we are in contact with a third party to assist them in making the necessary fixes. 
and reveals that they are actively looking into potential workarounds until this issue is resolved. Cyber thieves are cashing in after stealing credit cards in a hack attack on the websites of the cosmetic company Lush. Many Lush customers have reported that their cards have been used fraudulently. The online shop was shut down on the January 21st and its homepage was replaced with a message revealing the attack. Lush said anyone who placed an online order between October 4th and January 20th should contact their bank just in case their card details have been compromised. Ugh. You can get these full stories at our website, category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our wonderful community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hill. No problem. This episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by Pogoplug.com as well as Planet Calypso at cat5.tv slash Calypso. We are joined tonight uh, at Category 5 Yay. Technology TV, uh, right here at Category5.tv. If, you, uh, if you're watching through Justin.tv or Ustream and you want to find out uh, where our website is, that's it. In our beautiful wire <laughs> cast uh, lower third. Uh, we are joined tonight by uh, Philippa Hasselstrom uh, from uh, Telestream. Uh, she's the Wirecast product manager. Also, Christine Porter is uh, Telestream uh, and Wirecast community manager. And Christine, we're interested in, uh, in knowing a little bit more about uh, what it is that you do as the community manager. Of course, being the, the nature of our show, um, so focused on uh, open source technologies and uh, things like Linux, um, we're very community minded and even with our own uh, community here at Category5.tv. Um, so when I see that uh, you know a company has a community manager, it, it instantly makes you perk up and say, "Oh, okay, these guys uh, these guys have a community and they actually care about uh, the people who are using their software." Um, yeah. And it's a different model altogether. So if you could uh, just tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. Well, um, I we do a lot. Really, Twitter has been invaluable to mm. us. Um, I, we've formed a lot of relationships on Twitter with our customers, and it's. Uh, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be able to just look and see what people are saying about the products and then when necessary or when warranted I can jump in and I can help solve problems or I can give more information right. and um, people respond very positively to that and they like to see that they can um, that that the company's listening and that we pay attention and that there's follow-up and so forth um, so Twitter Twitter is probably one of the biggest uh, resources that we use as far as social media goes we also have uh, we have blogs for both ScreenFlow and for Wirecast, um, and those have been great in building the community and solving problems. And again, those also provide lots of opportunities for us to reach out to the community, to people that are using the products in maybe a high profile or not so high profile way, and we can profile them on the blog and show people right. how they're using the product. Um, it, it provides a great opportunity, really, to for the relate. It's it's really relationship building. Um, you know we're able to feature the customers on the blog and it's a win-win for everybody. We can show people how the products are being used mm -hmm. and we can also sh um, show, give some, shed some light on, uh, you know, a, 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 gosh, a <laughs> some <laughs> of the stuff that they some do. The I mean, the, the people that are experimenting yeah. because Wirecast, mm -hmm. as we said before, really invites people to do all this creative stuff. Right. And when we see people doing something really cool, we post it on the blog and, you know, we talk about it and, also, like Christine mentioned, for me as a product manager, it's amazing to have that extra set of eyes and ears out there. Because yeah. Twitter is, you know, they talk about all these things that they want or that they're right. trying. Yeah. And Watch for your hashtags, for sure. Exactly. It's invaluable. For, so for just us. before we get uh, too far away from the topic, how can we follow you on Twitter? And what's your blog website as well? <laughs> sure, happy to tell you that. Um, we have, we have Telestream has many Twitter accounts. Um, Wirecast is simply at Wirecast. ScreenFlow is at ScreenFlow. We have Flip for Mac, which is another popular product that we make is at Flip for Mac. And um, Telestream itself has a Twitter account, and I bet you can guess what that hashtag is. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, our blogs are the streaming room for the Wirecast blog, blogs.telestream.net uh, slash streaming room. And the ScreenFlow blog is blogs.telestream.net slash 
screening room. Yes. Lots Give to remember you. for sure. What we're going to do yeah. is uh, we're going to post links to uh, everything that was mentioned tonight uh, in the show notes for episode number 175. So if you missed any of that, uh, make sure you check out the show notes uh, at category5.tv for episode number 175. And uh, we'll include all the links that Christine was mentioning there as well. And I'll throw, I'll throw one more out there. Um, if somebody is not a Twitter user and they want to get in touch with us, you can also just email wirecast at telestream.net. Fantastic. And, uh, and also on these blogs, which is something that I really appreciate, is that we have a feature request there that people vote on and we have a list of them. Mm -hmm. And just go in there and give us as much feedback as possible. We'd love to get that. So how much weight would it take, uh, would, it, would a feature request have with Telestream? If I went on and said, I'd really like it to do this, how seriously does Telestream take that suggestion? If all of the if in the in the feature request tab you can vote so we always look at the top or at least I always watch the top feature requests and we kind of evaluate them and see what we could do or you know what our take would be on it sometimes users come up with a problem but it doesn't necessarily need to be the solution that they're trying to present solving it so it's always about a constant evaluation but we will I always read them um, I think it's really important to to see what's out there and what people right. are asking for. Okay. We talked a little bit earlier about how the cost of broadcasting on the internet um, has come down, and, and that said, I should say just the cost of broadcasting in general, because broadcasting on the internet now has become almost synonymous with with network broadcasting. It's become, you know, the big networks are using the internet instead of uh, satellite in some cases, like they used to have to use back in the 80s and 90s. Um, so things are really changing. So the cost has gone down, but what happened to um, the challenge level of becoming a broadcaster. I know back, you know, as mentioning the 80s and 90s, it would have taken a team of well-educated individuals to make a broadcast take place. So now that things have changed as far as the cost goes and, and who, and therefore who is able to broadcast because the cost has come so, so much down, how, how has the, uh, that same curve gone for uh, the ease of use? Well, it, I it's interesting because some people do one-man shows and they do everything. They'll have wirecasts going and they'll switch between shots. It's complicated to do, but it can be done. And then if you, if anybody checks out the streaming room blog that I mentioned earlier, some people have come up with neat ways to enable um, quick switching between shots by using these other devices. There's um, mm -hmm. the Cork Nano Control was one, and then there was another one. They're they're on they're on the blog, and so okay. that's another cool thing is that our, our customers introduce us to these novel ways that they go about solving problems. Yeah. I even uh, installed VNC server on the broadcast computer and then used VNC from the iPod Touch. And here I've got the little handheld <laughs> device and I'm suddenly able to control all of my camera switching from the iPod yeah, Touch. Yeah, it's great. And it's, yeah, it's that's amazing. So yeah. And what we see also, I think the challenge in the future will not be Everybody will can be a content producer. Everybody can do their own TV show because, as you said, you can operate it yourself. You just need a computer, um, a video camera, and an internet connection. So the challenge, I think, will be on the viewer side to kind of understand how do I get the news that I want? How yeah. do I find the channels that I want to see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it will be before it was really easy. You we, you went to the big broadcasting companies to watch content but I think now the content will be more specialized more focused people will have like you guys have a very well kind of scoped uh, type of live show and it will be there will be so many out there so it, the challenge right. will be to find what you want to watch and that's where but things like the you, you picture the Roku box coming in and the TiVo even uh, in the earlier yeah. days and then you've got uh, now I've noticed that IO gear even tweeted um, asking they're holding a contest saying what would a device have to do for you to cancel your cable TV? So even companies like IO Gear, it, it's like, okay, well, it's obvious that they're doing something behind the scenes. They're trying to get ready to take this internet-based media and make it so that it replaces the need for a cable TV. Yeah, I think that's definitely, I think that's where we are heading. I think we're heading towards web TV and internet. I mean, mm -hmm. we are already there, basically. Yeah. Really? But yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think definitely. And I mean, I come from Sweden. And I watch a lot of the Swedish TV shows on internet because I, I mean, I still want to see some of them. I like it. So I right. go into their page and it works great. Um, so I don't see a need for me to, I wouldn't want to watch Swedish television regularly. I now prefer watching it on the web. <laughs> it's interesting how that has also changed the way that we perceive 
viewing because it's on demand if you want it to be on demand. Our viewers can tune in live if they'd like to interact. But a majority of our viewership comes from people who download the show and watch the show later. So suddenly broadcasting doesn't just become more affordable and this, you know, everything we've talked about so far, but also for advertisers, it becomes, it's, it's, this, it's what we call the ripple effect here, where we see for, for sometimes months beyond a live broadcast, there, there's still people who are, you know, you sell advertising and they're still selling products based on that ad six months later because people are still downloading the video. And it's become this yeah. whole new media where it's not like it broadcasted once and you might catch it on a rerun. It, th mm -hmm. This is something that is, it, mm -hmm. it's more ongoing. Yeah, it's a combination of the live event and then keeping, you know, a file for reference that people can watch and it will be there forever and ever. I mean, yeah. it, it will always be out there and that's really, yeah. And how does Stay. Telestream make that easier for the user? Um, so we've got we've covered the live broadcasting end, end of things. How can we then, then take our live broadcast and make it into something that becomes on demand, maybe with YouTube or something like that? Well, Wirecast. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wirecast, of course, offers the opportunity that at the same time that you guys are streaming live to you, Justin and Ustream, you can also record um, maybe a high resolution copy to disk. Um, if you want to use that, and um, then use it for later, and you could set, you know, set up the preference that you want for that high res copy, right. and then post it on YouTube, mm -hmm. like you guys are doing, I imagine. Exactly. Yeah. So you you picture uh, a broadcaster who's mm -hmm. sending out this video at 400 kilobits a second because they're limited to the internet connection, but recording locally at 2,000 kilobits a second. So all of a sudden exactly. they've got this version of the video that can be burnt to a DVD or that can be watched through uh, uh, like a, a media PC or something like that connected to an HDTV. So suddenly there, there are two different platforms coming from this one piece of software. Yeah. So that is, yeah, that's what we see that people use and that we use ourselves for our weekly meetings because yep. we always right. say them so people can watch them when they want. Do you have any interesting use cases uh, from schools that have used the software, uh, perhaps government agencies, mm -hmm. town halls, uh, groups that, maybe small groups that I could see it even being used for like somebody who wants to do like a cooking show in a group <laughs> setting. Like yeah. you could use this for educational purposes and for, right. you know, creating your own food TV or <laughs> whatever you want to do. Um, and yeah. certainly you mentioned about a little bit about sports coverage and mm -hmm. things like that. Are there any interesting use cases that you can think of off the top of your head that... Uh... Yeah, we also see it, I mean, we've had medical companies, you know, people want to do mm. lectures on operations and operation rooms, so they want to live stream okay. uh, the operation and then they want to live stream the audience watching it and they want to have, you know, a chat room with questions to the doctors operating and, you know, integrating that as a kind of very interactive uh, lecture and they are both, they are located in totally different locations. Right. Um, it's really fascinating. Yeah. We've had a guy who's working with that with us now, and uh, and that that's similar to the lecture. Uh, I, again, I'm working with a professor right mm -hmm. now who's doing the same thing at a university, and with the same. I mentioned earlier the same thing with everybody can interact with one another via the chat logs and everything. So, right. and then we've had we've had a lot of local events here that mm -hmm. have used Wirecast. The Nevada City Film Festival has you we have used Wirecast. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had. I mean, we have, when we went to Blog World, we were there uh, last year, we went to, um, we heard a lot of people, you know, just wanted to live stream their concerts. Like, right. um, I'm playing well, a band, I a live stream, I yeah. want to show my band on the web. And I yep. think that is a great thing. Just put it out there and, and make people listen and hear you and yeah. So if you have a webcam or a digital video camera that's uh, connectable mm -hmm. to a computer, uh, pretty much any device correct? If, yeah. if any device that will connect into your computer essentially is yeah. going to be able to work with uh, with Wirecast and your other products? If it's a camera with an HDMI or an SDI, you know, um, we can use it and use that as a source. Yeah. Put USB your, cameras what? or... In FireWire, USB, all of that. So it's just put your camera in Wirecast or no, put your camera, plug your camera into your computer. Right. <laughs> and then you can Wirecast uh, and uh, you can live stream your concert. Or school events, you know, we're doing something at school, and we could live stream mm -hmm. that. Right. All types of things. Yeah. There, there's so so many uses to mm -hmm. to how this can be done, and then of course there's taking it 
another step in and doing something like Category yeah. 5 TV where, you know, here we are in our fourth season of internet broadcasting and just really changing the way that users can interact with a show with our chat room. Hillary's mm -hmm. watching the chat room. We've got email coming <laughs> in and we've got everything else going on. And yeah. it, that was never really available to, to users before because you turn on the TV and if you're fortunate, you might come across a show that says call in and you get an answering machine and you leave a message and they answer it three shows later kind of <laughs> thing. But it's totally yeah. different when you, when you work on something like this and it opens up uh, that communication. I can see how that could be used in education and uh, training. Seminars yeah. and things I, like that. I thought of another interesting example. We have a, a couple different companies that are using it um, that are storm chaser outfits. Oh, wow. And they, they, do, they chase tornadoes around and they use Wirecast to stream live uh, weather events. So that's another kind that's of really unusual. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Very cool. <laughs> In fact, that, you, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say we, one, one thing that came up from those people is that we needed to have an auto reconnect capability. So that was an example of, you know, in these right. severe environments, they might lose their connection. And so we were able to implement something so that they could reboot and then the stream would start immediately so they wouldn't lose anything and have to reconfigure everything and so forth. Oh, neat. So th yeah. then again, there's this scenario where somebody's made a suggestion and you've taken it into account and said, oh, this is a, a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Very cool. So, what else can we say about uh, about Wirecast? It's a it's a broadcasting software. It's a uh, you know if your computer will support it, it'll record to HD video uh, locally. It uh, it allows you to do live camera switching, everything that you see us do on the show, and as well as the broadcasting of desktop operating systems, for example, right? So everything that you see here is done through Wirecast. I'm using Linux, and so I have this handy little tool called Desktop Presenter. And Desktop Presenter allows me to capture my main display and broadcast that to Wirecast. And that goes directly to the Wirecast application and allows me to stream my desktop in a much higher quality mm -hmm. than if it were, say, a composite cable coming out of the computer, an S-video cable uh, to a capture card. And uh, you can have, is it, I guess, an unlimited yep. number of computers as well. Wirecast is both Mac and Windows, um, yeah. so it's cross-platform. You can use it um, regardless. Yeah. And um, and we uh, the <clears throat> excuse me the the evolution of the product. We have a lot of stuff um, going on this year, and so I think um, customers and would-be customers will be really happy where this product is going. Yeah, I think so too. Definitely. <laughs> and I mean, we're always working on. Uh, we're also kind of working on going after, of course, the low-end hardware competitors that we see out there. Mm -hmm. We want to do. I've added virtual set now in our last release, and also scoreboards. But uh, of course, we want to add more stuff that can help you guys make even more exciting and, and uh, really professional-looking video. Fantastic. Um, you, I think you already are doing that, but we want we, to give you more. We, we here at Category 5, we try to stay on top of like the, what's latest and greatest and, and move forward yeah. in it. And what's neat is that as you release new software and new features and updates and patches, we're able to benefit from those and our viewers, therefore, are able to benefit from those mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and we, we want to get more pro features for you guys in there. Great. Yeah, and it's it's... Fantastic as it is, I gotta say. Um, and I'll just mention now, while the broadcasting end of things is designed to run on Mac and uh, and Windows, uh, and we have to run it on Windows 7 here uh, in order to mm -hmm. do the broadcast. So that's where all our cameras plug into and everything like that. Uh, it's our one Windows computer, <laughs> and it does all of that. And uh, I think it was Gadwell just wondering if uh, I believe it was wondering if it makes it worth running Windows in that scenario and and if you're going to be doing broadcasting seriously then yeah. it, it the, you need to have a broadcast computer and this is the software that's going to make it happen for you um, so you know it does definitely make it worth worthwhile you can see how the show has progressed and even tonight with the HD camera that wouldn't have been possible without uh, without this software um, but and that said cool about hardware is that I mean the the UK the the Call of Duty the Black Ops launch yep. that we talked about they only used a MacBook Pro for the entire event. Right. Computer and my viewers laptop. may remember back when I did the Cottage episode, I was uh, actually on location in the middle of the forest with my uh -huh. laptop and a single video camera going through uh, FireWire to a, a FireWire card in the laptop and was able to broadcast from there as well. And that was all through Wirecast. So 
there's so much that you can do with it. I was talking about being able to stream the desktop to Wirecast, and while that is a Windows application, that also uh, does run under Wine perfectly, as you've seen uh, any time I bring up our desktop here on the show. Just thought I'd mm -hmm. mention that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Indeed. This is Category 5 Technology TV. It's fantastic having you here. And uh, we're joined tonight by, uh, by Philippa and Christine from uh, Telestream. And they are the makers of Wirecast, among other software. But Wirecast is the software that allows us to broadcast Category 5 Technology TV. And uh, certainly encourage you to check it out. We have a special URL, cat5.tv slash Wirecast, if you'd like to check it out. And in a couple of weeks' time, we're actually going to be giving away a copy that's worth $449 US. Um, so stick, uh, make sure you're watching the show over the next few weeks because we're going to tell you how you can get that, uh, get in on that software. We're going to be taking ballots for that over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but tonight we have some pogo plugs to give away. All right. So unless uh, well, I'll, I'll let you uh, kind of wrap up, uh, Philippa and uh, and Christine. Um, because we're just about out of time, but I, I really appreciate the time that you've taken to be with us tonight mm -hmm. uh, here at Category 5, and, uh, and certainly I know that there's going to be questions after the fact, because like I say, there's that ripple effect. I'll encourage you mm -hmm. to email us live at category5.tv, and uh, Christine was mentioning earlier that uh, you can email wirecast at telestream.net as well, and uh, we'd encourage you to, to get your questions in. Emailing Category 5, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you on the air. And, of course, uh, Telestream is there to answer your questions about Wirecast as well. It's been fantastic having you on the show. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks, ladies. Thank, Thank you so much. Have a great night. It was fun. <laughs> We're going to go back out in the sun now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey, now. It's like 40 below and snowing here. <laughs> so, but, uh, okay. And thank you, guys. You enjoy. Take care. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye. Bye. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online, www.category5.tv. Hillary, it's so nice to have you here. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Yeah? It's been really good. It's always great to have I you here in the, studio. in the studio. It's not the same from my laptop on my little webcam. It's not quite the same feeling, right. but I'm glad to be here. The hot lights. Makes you feel oh, like you're in sunny California. I, I know, right? If I close my <laughs> eyes, uh... I yeah. can't tell the difference. Brilliant. Uh, you didn't get to say much tonight. <laughs> I was just listening. Like, that was really interesting, like, for me, especially, like, with my program at school, like, yep. being in, in broadcasting and, and oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so just, like, listening to that and just, uh, technology blows my mind. Perpetually it's blows my mind. amazing how things so have changed. this is really cool. Wirecast is really neat and, uh. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. So I was I was really focusing actually. I was kinda like zoning out. I was like tuning out the chat room. Just kidding, I love you guys. But I was that was really interesting. Yeah. Cool. And I would encourage you to get your questions in. This is episode number one seventy five. Check out the show notes for the uh, the episode if you're watching this after the fact and those will be there for you. It's that time, people. Here you go. Vanna Brilliant. White in the house. We got two of those to give away tonight. Oh. And I had to figure out how are we gonna give this away? Hmm. Because our script kitties bombarded us with. Uh, <laughs> um, I kept ch yeah checking Twitter and you're like, thousand emails in, da -da 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 -da. and so many people. How many emails did you get? Are you ready for the final count? I'm a little nervous. You guys ready for this? Dun -da -da -da. Can you show that? How many ballots did we receive that for could be a contest in and of the pogo plug? <laughs> if you can guess, you will. Uh, uh, the Pogo Plug is a great device, and I know that our viewers are, are keen on winning it. Your chances, uh, your odds are not too high tonight. <laughs> Statistics will tell us that a lot of people entered. Are you going to say I, it? I can't even show them. Just, just tell them. I can't. So many. Too many people. Are you going to do it, or am I? You are. 39,232. Can you believe that? Almost 40,000 So your chances tonight are about <laughs> 1 in 40,000. Crazy! So crazy. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to bring up my trusty old little website here. And I'm going to go random.org. I'm going to grab the count of messages. And yes, this is, this is for real. This is insane. Look at that. Check it out, people. Legit. We're going to generate a random number between 1 and 39,000. What did I say it was? Uh, 232. 232. Generating random number from random.org. It's 11804. For the sake of privacy, I'm going to uh, 
change cameras there because we don't want to reveal any email addresses. But I will tell you that in fact he is pulling 11804. Out email. And what yes. I've done is I have sorted these by the order in which they were received. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. We need some drums. <laughs> One one eight oh four. Good luck. Good luck. One one eight oh four. I'm scrolling one, through thirty nine thousand two hundred and thirty two email. One one eight oh four. One one eight oh four. Almost there. One one eight oh four. This pogo. It says pick me. Yours. Pick me. Pick me. Said who? Giles Richardson. <gasps> dun, da, da, da. Congratulations. You are the owner of a brand new pogo plug. From pogoplug.com and category5.tv. But wait, I said there were two. He did. Hark. Not one, but two. So. Random.org. Let's generate a random number 723. Okay. One of the low numbers. <laughs> Seemingly low. I'm going to have to scroll quite a ways here. <laughs> 723, I see. 723? Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. The 723rd email to arrive in my inbox comes to us from <laughs> Rodney Wright. Rodney Wright. Congratulations. Yay. Hooray! You are the proud owner of a brand new pogo plug. Featured here. So the two of you, Giles <laughs> and, uh, and Rodney, make sure you send me an email live at category5.tv. Yes. I will need your full shipping address so that we can ship that out to you by courier. And also the uh, courier usually requires your phone number as well that's attributed to that address and, uh, and your name, everything that we would need to, uh, to ship that to you. Uh, and that will be on its way. So congratulations to our winners tonight. And uh, we will have some more pogo plugs to give away in February as well. So, uh, so you haven't missed your chance. No. no. And uh, and you can stop emailing me now. <laughs> but We're not taking any more ballots. For your uh, great okay. interest, people, I'm impressed. Almost forty thousand. The interest was That's great. A lot. Forty thousand you know. <laughs> uh, ballots in one week. So I had to cut it off this morning because I was like, "That's it. No more <laughs> <Too> ballots." <much. laughs> Congratulations, and I hope you've had a lot of fun tonight. And again, if you have questions for Wirecast, um, you know, if it's about Wirecast and you want to hear it answered on the show, email me live at category5.tv. And of course, we're going to have a whole bunch of links for you for Wirecast in the show notes for category5.tv, episode number 175. And remember, cat5.tv slash Wirecast is a uh, website that you can go to, yes. and that's going to uh, give you a deal on Wirecast. We're going to be giving away the software. Uh, in just a few weeks, uh, and we'll be announcing how we can go about that. We're not going to double up contests uh, right. per show, uh, but next week we'll be announcing how we're <laughs> going to be doing that. So, thanks so much for being with us, and mm -hmm. thank you for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. Loads of fun. My pleasure. Everybody, have a good night tonight. It's been hard to oh, yeah. follow the chat room and everything, but uh, I will definitely go over the chat logs at category5.tv. Oh, yeah, lots going on in the chat room. Mm -hmm. People are always buzzing. That's for sure. For sure. And I'm glad I was here to give away this pogo plug. Two of them. I Sweet. love free stuff, and I know you guys do too. So, tray fun, if you ask me. We uh, we did receive some email this week, and uh, of course, with the special nature of tonight's show, uh, we were unable to get to those. But yes, we will address your questions. If you sent us a question at live at category five TV, we'll take care of you next week. Don't you worry. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Hope you learn lots. That's all the time that we have for tonight. Time flies when you're having fun. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful week. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Same time uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And, uh, and make sure you tweet me. There you have it. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye, Have everyone. a great week. See ya.